We're gonna go over four different things. The first thing we'll go over is what is fasting. We're gonna go over what the Bible says about fasting. And then we're gonna lump three and four together, how to fast and what to fast. So the first thing um, that I want to do is I wanna go over the, what fasting isn't and what fasting is. First and foremost, fasting isn't required, commanded, or demanded in the Bible. I want you guys to know that nowhere in Scripture does it command, demand, you're not obliged. It's not something that is required. It is not something that is necessary. This is a decision and a choice that we make. Uh, I want you to understand that fasting is good, it is profitable, and it is beneficial. Um, and when we get to the Bible aspect, I'll share different instances when fasting took place and what was accompanied by that. The other thing that fasting isn't, fasting isn't just food. Okay, and, it, or, or, and it's not just about food. So fasting isn't a weight loss program. This isn't, uh, we're not doing this necessarily for our overall health. We're doing this for our spiritual health. Fasting is taking your eyes off of the things of this world to focus on God. And it can be anything. So it's not about me denying myself necessarily or uh, because, but there is an aspect of denial, but it's not about that. It's removing things that we typically spend time doing and then filling that same time with things that, I don't want to say help us get closer to God because you can't get closer to God, but help us to focus more on God. Like I said, fasting isn't for weight loss, uh, but really it's for a renewed perspective and a reliance on God. When we remove things that are distracting us and, and food, believe it or not, especially in the Western civilization, food has become a distraction. Food is something that uh, preoccupies a lot of people, right? What are we eating for breakfast? What's for lunch? I need some snacks. I'm hungry. There's this constant pull at our attention that comes from the flesh and it's a very real need, but are we completely reliant upon that? Is it a distraction? Are we spending more time thinking about food and our next meal and where we're going to eat and what we're going to do? Are we thinking more about our comfort than our Savior? Are there areas in our life where we're able to maybe step away from food for an extended period of time and step into things that will put our eyes on Jesus? Uh, fasting isn't, I said this already, is not a way to get closer to God. Um, you are as close to God as you will ever be right here, right now. There's, there's not a, a distance, a physical, a tangible distance. Now it might feel as if God is far away, but when we understand the nature of God, who God is, his character, and that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we can't do anything, posture, or work to get ourselves physically closer to him. So we're not fasting in order to convince God to answer our prayers. We're not uh, fasting in order to change his mind about something. We're not fasting in order to control or manipulate the outcome of something. In fact, fasting isn't going to change God. The idea is it's going to change you, right? The fasting changes you. It changes your perspective. The other thing that fasting isn't, it's not meant to be torture. It's not meant to be a burden. It's not meant to be necessarily a challenge. We're not starting the year with a fast because we're trying to lose 15 pounds. Now, that might be a byproduct of it, but again, this is a spiritual fast. And again, it doesn't have to be food. I'll get to that in just a moment. But this, we're not doing this in order to torture ourselves or to see how long we can go. If you're fasting and the, you know, and you're being a jerk the whole time, maybe it's time to rethink the fast and maybe try fasting something else or in a different way. If it's affecting your character and how you're treating people, it's probably not a good idea. You might not be spiritually mature or, or in the right place or even in the mi right mindset to be doing a fast if it's affecting how you're representing Jesus at the end of the day. What it is, to, uh, what fasting is, it is to be done in humility and in joy. This is something that we get to do. This is a privilege. It should not be burdensome. So what I want to talk about are just some moments in the Bible where they mentioned fasting. And this is not all inclusive. There are several other references, but I wanted to use um, just a few in Acts chapter 13 and chapter 14. Um, it's 13.2 and 14.23. 
we see the disciples fasting before making big decisions. They're making that they're, they're they're fasting before choosing who's going to be the next uh, disciple, the next apostle, and they're also fasting before uh, they're putting leadership people in positions of leadership. So fasting is something that is good when you're trying to gain clarity on a choice or a decision that you're trying to make. Again, not trying to twist or manipulate God's hand and move in a certain direction, but really putting food out of the way so you can enter into prayer and get clarity on a situation. Another time they mention fasting is in Luke chapter 2 verse 37 and in Luke chapter 5 verse 33. And the fasting that is mentioned in the book of Luke, prayer is accompanied. So there's this idea of when we're fasting, we're not just not eating and going about our day. We're not eating and replacing the time that we would usually spend eating with prayer or with a, other, a list of other things that I'll get to. But there's this, there's this trade-off. It's not necessary, but the idea is I'm denying myself this food. I'm not eating and I'm replacing that time with activities or things that will help me get a better clarity or a better focus on what I'm, what I'm focusing on. It all ties together. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, there's an example of fasting that's not associated with food. Uh, verses 1 through 5 talk about marriage. It talks about sex. It talks about it's good for a man to, if, if a man and a wife come together, that they deny themselves each other pleasure, which is a sense of fasting. They don't come together for a period of time. So we understand that fasting isn't just food. There are other things that can be fasted in different situations. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, um, it talks about not doing, uh, not fasting for an applause. It's between you and God. Not putting on sackcloth and ashes and walking around trying to garner the attention of everybody. And you know what I'm talking about. The guy at the water cooler, they're like, hey, come sit down and have some food. Oh, <laughs> actually, no, I'm, I'm fasting right now for the Lord. 21 days, it's not a big deal. But, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just denying myself. And it's like, don't make it a big deal. Don't make it about the show. Uh, you're supposed to, it even says, it says, oh, slap some water and soap on your face. Man, wash your face, put on some fresh clothes, go about your business. You don't got to let the whole world know that you're doing a fast, right? But it, it seems like, you know, that, that, the cute gal at the office, I'd really like to take you out to dinner, but you know, I'm doing this 21 day Daniel fast, just working on my spiritual life, you know, just try like using it as a means to impress or garner the applause of others. That's not what we're here for. And Jesus warns against that. Uh, in Matthew chapter four, verse two, it talks about Jesus fasting for 40 days. I bring that up because if it was good for Jesus, it's good for us. Now, uh, we're not going to do a 40-day fast, although I think that that's something we could work up to at some point. But um, I believe that Jesus left the blueprint on how we should conduct ourselves. Again, reemphasize, there's nowhere in Scripture that commands it, demands it, or tells us that it's something that we have to do. But we understand that it's profitable, it's good, and uh, it's, it's something that we should be doing when led by the Spirit. The last two verses that I'll share from this fasting standpoint are found in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 through 14. Uh, what a lot of people do and what we did last year was a Daniel fast. We did a 10-day Daniel fast. And the 10-day Daniel fast was, uh, it, it was based on Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 through 14. Daniel does two different fasts. One uh, is to be set aside, and I'll, I'll break that down in just a moment. The other one is done in mourning. Um, in chapter 1, verses 8 through 14, uh, he was sitting down and, and eating with all of the other like recruits. We'll just call them recruits for this purpose. And the food that they were serving, it was choice goods, it was wine, it was things that most likely weren't kosher. And so the guys who were serving the food were like, no, you got to eat because we don't want you guys looking frail or looking sickly if you're not eating. And Daniel said, give me 10 days 
where all I do is drink water and eat vegetables. I'll abstain from all of those other things. And if we look good, me and a couple of my boys, if we look good, then continue to feed us that way. And so this 10 day Daniel fast is a fast where people only eat vegetables. There's no animal products, largely no alcohol, no caffeine, and it's just water and vegetables for a 10 day span. And that's where this 10 day Daniel fast originates from. At the end of the 10 days, just FYI, it says that their skin looked good, their countenance was radiant, and they, they actually looked healthier than the group of individuals who were eating the choice food and drinking the wine. And so uh, he allowed them to only eat water and vegetables uh, for the remainder of the time. In Daniel chapter 10, verses 2 and 3, uh, there was a, a time of mourning where Daniel did for three weeks. It was water and, and choice food only. Um, so it was a, an extended period for a different reason. And he went so extreme. Some speculate that it was just water. Some speculate that it was similar to the first 10 day fast. But the one thing he didn't put on, he didn't anoint himself. He didn't put on no lotion. So my dude was looking ashy for 21 days, just drinking water. Her skin was probably glowing. He was looking good. But that's kind of where the Daniel, that is where the Daniel fast comes from, from chapter one, chapter 10, two different instances of uh, fasting there. The third and fourth thing I wanted to talk about was how to fast and what to fast. And I think that we have to go to scripture because some of you might be sitting here and like, okay, I want to fast food. I don't want to fast food. And I'm not saying you want to eat fast food. You want to fast from food or you don't want to fast from food. Maybe some of you, it's social media. Some of you, it might be an addiction. Maybe it's cigarettes. Maybe you want to use this time of fasting to break some kind of a habit, right? Because I mean, even cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking is time consuming. And, you know, I used to be a smoker when I was 18. Uh, I'd go out and smoke a cigarette at every break that they gave us at the factory. I would smoke on the way home. It took up a lot of my time. And so fasting from cigarette smoking would actually open up. Not only would it save you some money, save your health, but it would also give you more time with God. Instead of taking a 10 minute cigarette break, go take a 10 minute prayer break. So what you can fast is truly between you and God. But I believe that we have to look to James chapter one, verse five. And uh, that's just a scripture talking about those of you who lack wisdom, ask God and he will give wisdom in abundance, right? Those who seek after wisdom and knowledge and understanding, God gives in abundance. So right now I would be saying, God, what is it that you want me to fast? I'm interested. I want to set aside maybe 10, maybe 21 days. I'm not sure. Uh, what is it that you want me to fast? So it comes from asking God. I believe that many of you probably already have an idea. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's maybe it is sex with your wife. Maybe you're having so much of it you need a 21 day break. I pray that that's the issue for most of you. But uh, whatever that is, solidify that in your heart. Now, the how. The, the structure is between you and God. I don't want people, I don't want it to become so rigid that it becomes a burden. Remember, Jesus' yoke is light and, and it's not burdensome. So this shouldn't become this thing where you're holding on for dear life for the next 21 days. You're not being kind or being gentle. You're going through all of these mood swings and you're just like, uh, not a kind person to be around. Well, I'm doing this fast for God, but then you're completely not exhibiting the characteristics of God. That doesn't make sense. I think that that's something that many times people miss. So how we do this fast, there's several different ways and you have to solidify that with yourself and with God. So if you're going to do food, there's three different ways that they do it. There's a regular fast where it's just water. You, you, you drink water. There's a partial fast, which is similar to the Daniel fast, where you just refrain from certain foods. Maybe all you do for 21 days is you don't drink alcohol. Or maybe for 21 days you don't drink coffee. Or maybe for 21 days you don't eat animal products. You have to figure this out for yourself. I can't tell you what God's putting on your heart to fast from. So that's where it is. But there's that partial. And then there's absolute where there's nothing at all. Um, we see the regular or, you know, was done by Jesus for 40 days, just water. Um, Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles was another example of somebody doing a regular fast. The partial, again, was found in Daniel. And the absolute fast, nothing at all, was found in Esther, where Esther 
you know, fasted absolutely with nothing, no drink, no food for three days in a row. So what you have to do is you have to establish, okay, I'm going to do 21 days. I'm going to fast from social media and uh, I'm, you know, I'm only going to watch coffee and prayer on YouTube, right? That's, that's your 21 day fast. You commit to that between you and God. Another example, okay, for 10 days, I'm only going to drink water between the time I wake up and 8 p.m because I need to have a couple of calories at the end of the night. So I'm setting this time for 21 days between wake up and 8 p.m. I'm not going to eat anything. I'm only going to drink water. If you guys don't get what I'm saying, it's, it's not a rigid box that it's this and it can't be that. This is between you and God. That is the emphasis that he should be putting something on your heart and that you need to be being obedient and responding. You might be listening to all this and be like, ah, God doesn't want me to fast from anything. I'm awesome. I'm good to go. As we kind of close, there's a couple of things that I want to be very clear on. Have a clear purpose of your why. Why are you fasting? Why are you entering into this moment of setting time aside to draw closer to God? Is it a prayer that you need clarity on? Is it a decision that you're about to make that really needs some, some guidance? Uh, what, what is it? What is the purpose of your fast? Is Oh, it's just cool. All the men are doing it. So I'm going to jump on the wagon. If your why is weak, you're going to have a hard time finishing strong. If your why is weak, you're going to be doing it for the wrong reasons. And there isn't going to be any revelation on the other side. So fasting is less about food and it's more about focus. Is It's increasing our focus. It's, in, it's taking things that are sucking and taking our time and now we're replacing it with focusing on God. We're removing things and replacing it with time with God. A couple of ways that that can be is rather than eating, we'll just use food for the, the, the purpose of this example. Rather than eating, maybe you pray. Rather than eating during your times, your, your lunch time, maybe you're journaling, right? I've been journaling a ton recently and it's been extremely therapeutic. Maybe you're reading, maybe not just your scripture. Maybe there's a book that you've been wanting to read that you bought that's been sitting on the counter that's got dust on it because you haven't had time. So now you would commit the next 21 days to, okay, I'm going to be in prayer, I'm going to journal more, and I'm going to finish this book in 21 days. Maybe it's just time alone. Maybe you're turning off the Maverick City and you're just, uh, maybe you're turning off the Poor Legacy uh, album and you're just spending more time with God. That's a shout out to my guy, Burl. Uh, maybe it's a time of reflection. Maybe you're just kicking back and uh, you're reflecting on how far God has brought you or you're reflecting on your, uh, the, your current season that you're in and areas that you can potentially make improvements. Uh, but it's up to you. Before you start, these are three questions that I want you to ask yourself and to really, to really think about, right? It's important. Number one is what are your motives? Why are you fasting? Is this something that is trendy? Is this because you want to lose some extra pounds? Is it because it's a New Year's resolution and you just want to see how far you can go? Make sure that your motives are pure. Make sure that the reason that you're doing this is truly led by the Spirit. I believe that if it's placed on your heart by the Spirit, there's no wrong way that you can do this fast. You create your own parameters. You create your own length. You create those things. You commit to it, and then you execute it. The second thing is, is it doable? Ask yourself, is this doable? Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't start out, if you've never fasted before, go, I'm going 21 days, and I'm only drinking water, baby. Like, I'm not saying that you can't do it, but why not start with 10 and go from there? Uh, maybe make a decision. Set yourself up for success. Again, this isn't a command. This isn't something that is required. This isn't something that we have to do. This is optional. This is a decision. This is a public or a private declaration and commitment that you're making between you and God. Set yourself up for success. And then the third thing is, do you have medical issues? Okay. Um, do you have low blood sugar? Because it might not be diligent or wise to go on a 21 day fast where you're not eating anything that's going to, uh, that's going to get your blood sugar to where it needs to be. Like I said, if this becomes an issue where you're no longer representing Jesus, you're no longer being a good witness for the sake of fasting, your motives are wrong and you're kind of missing the point. 
right? Make sure that you are setting yourself up for success and that this isn't becoming a burden. This isn't becoming uh, work, right? Because that's the last thing that we want to turn fasting into. And unfortunately, that's where I think a lot of people get it wrong is it becomes this duty. And if they fail or if they make a mistake, they've set the bar too high, they start beating themselves up. And then they're starting the year instead of a 21 day success. Now, oh, well, I'm not good enough. I'm throwing in the towel. I couldn't even make it 21 days. And that's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. So make sure that your motives are pure, that this is doable, and that you don't have any medical issues where you're turning into a bridezilla or you know, you're getting so hangry where you're flipping people off and not being a good representative of Jesus because you decided to do a fast with your church. Don't make any sense. But that is uh, my little bit on fasting 